a picture is worth a thousand words. Let me give you guys some ideas on how you can organize information in SharePoint. And you're gonna say, Bill, this isn't about SharePoint. And I'm gonna say, right, good, you're getting, them, you're getting it, right? Here it is. You wanna take your business and you wanna divide it into at least no more than seven buckets. What is it that we do? What is it that we do? You wanna take a look at that and develop broad categories of what your company does. And then within each category, leaving out accounting, by the way, because they already got their own taxonomy from generally accepted accounting principles, right? You wanna develop an operational taxonomy per bucket, okay? Now, I've been working with a, uh, a, a large pharmaceutical on the East Coast. And their question to me in the last conference call I had was this. Should we have global metadata applied to all of our documents in SharePoint document-wide or corporate-wide? Okay, this is 50,000 plus users, over 50 million documents. Should we try to apply global metadata? Well, uh, yeah, okay, you can. I wouldn't do more than three or four metadata fields and you're gonna have to get everybody in the company on the same page. Because who, who tags the documents? The author of the document. Is it you, the IT people? Do you go in and tag documents? No. Now I know what the business unit's gonna ask for. Automatic tagging. We want metadata applied automatically so we don't have to think about it. We don't want the users to think, we just want them to work, which is kind of an oxymoron when you stop to think about it, right? I, don't worry, I've heard it before. Develop out your operational taxonomies per bucket. If you need a global taxonomy across the enterprise, go ahead and do it, okay? After you do that, then you're gonna to wanna to take several things together here. You're gonna to wanna to look at how your information goes into SharePoint so that when it comes out, it makes sense. Okay, and in order for it to go into SharePoint in the same way, your users have to be on the same page. They have to know what the metadata fields are, what the choice values are, why they would select which value over which value, and as that document goes into SharePoint, you need to make sure that the metadata is treated in a consistent fashion. All right, now would you use content types? Of course. Are you gonna use side columns? Well, isn't that a content type? I mean, six of one, half dozen of the other, right? But you're gonna use side columns and content types to organize your information in SharePoint. But here's the kicker. What if you need those across web applications? Then you're gonna wrap those up into features. Now I'm talking 2007 here. You're gonna wrap them up into features and deploy them. What would you do in 2010? I can't tell you until tomorrow morning, all right? NDA is specific to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, so I can't tell you what you're doing in 2010. All I can tell you is that you'll do it. You'll like it, you'll enjoy it, you'll love it. It'll be better than your first kiss, okay? So, which for some of you is not a high bar there, right? Okay? So, you're gonna wanna know how the information goes in, and you may have to develop some findability tools and what I call putability tools so that when the findability tools are used to get the information back out, it's meaningful, it's quick, and it's easy, okay? Then you're gonna wanna enforce the same rules, that's governance, and you're gonna want it maintained over a long period of time so that you have consistency in your metadata. Why do we use metadata? And again, why do we use metadata? We use metadata because the actual data probably is not discriminatory enough. It is the metadata that you attach to the data that makes the data findable. Don't rely on the simple, humble keyword search to find it. Use the advanced search web part. Build out those advanced columns. Teach your users how to use that so that they can find the information quickly and easily. Now, I know what the pushback here is. The pushback is this. I want to be able to type in a single doc or a single word and get the exact document I want. Don't make me work hard. Don't make me think hard. Just get it to me, right? Do you guys know the RFC? I think it's 1925. 
about the 12 truths of networking. Have you guys ever seen that RFC? It's been accepted. It's part of our how we do business. Rule number, well, rule number two was, yes, pigs can fly with enough thrust, but you don't want that. But rule number, I think it's four or five, is this. You can have it fast, you can have it cheap, or you can have it right. Pick any two. Okay? If they want it right and they want it cheap, it's not, you know. Point is, is if they just want a fast way to find information without putting in effort at the user end, it's not going to work. And here's the deal. They're already spending an inordinate amount of time in any efficient processes trying to find information. And they're not getting it. So how about if we revamp and re-engineer, start from the ground up, and get this thing working in the right way and get all of the end users on the page at the same time? It seems to me that you would get more value out of your SharePoint implementation and out of your information if you would simply make the putability and then the findability congruent across your organization. Once you get all that done, that's how you're going to do it. Okay? Now, did I talk about SharePoint? Yeah. But did I talk about SharePoint? No. Because SharePoint, the problem to organizing information and finding information is not, the solution is not primarily a technology solution. It is primarily a cultural and an organizational and a patterns and practices solution. Is SharePoint a great platform in which to do that? The answer is yes. Is SharePoint the right answer? The answer is oftentimes yes. But is technology the solution? The answer is no. So we have within Summit 7, our consulting arm, a whole product now where we come in and we help companies organize their information. And we start at the cultural level, the business layer, and then we work our way into SharePoint. Okay, questions? Yes, sir. Can I give an example of? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the buckets here is probably going to be people. Okay? Which, by the way, if you're not implementing user profiles, how are you going to find expertise? Because the whole point of user profiles is the ability to taxonomize people and their experiences and their expertise so that you can find expertise and experience, what we call tacit knowledge, knowledge that hasn't been written down yet. Okay, That would be one of your buckets. Another bucket would be uh, money. Oftentimes, another bucket is operations. Oftentimes, another bucket is product development or research, something like that. Does that make some sense? OK. But notice that I'm not necessarily talking about divisions. I'm talking about functions. Some of these functions may cross divisional lines. Trying to get everybody, you know, because I know what those senior VPs do. I mean, they just pee on all four corners of their information. This is my stuff. No, it actually belongs to the company. And you may have a big stake in it, but it's my it's not your stuff, it belongs to the company. So uh, one more question. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Was I serious about what? I was serious about the accountants having their own organization of information. But you probably are still going to have to go in and taxonomize the accounting information. So we had a company, I, I worked with a company in Southern California that had 56 major data elements, 258 minor data elements, each of them with their own taxonomies, right? So an example of this would be uh, the profit and loss statement would be a major data element, your AR, APay, cash flow, and some other things that would roll up into what the profit and loss would be. Those would be your minor data elements, okay? So that's, that's an example of how you go through this. <coughs> Guys, you can implement content types all day long. If you don't have the framework within which to implement them, all you're doing is organizing chaos in an unorganized way. All right? Okay. So if you're interested, uh, take a look at our 
information organization product. The guy to talk to there is Scott. He's over there talking to John Holliday. Hi, John, and Rick Taylor. And, uh, and I'll be around to answer questions. I want to thank you for